So question two was, what are some systems and procedures you've used to support voice and choice? Uh, one of the big things that I found when we first started our poetry unit, kids had a very extended amount of time they had to self-monitor, and that was a nightmare at first <laughs> because they do not know how to work for extended periods of time. So I had, we call them time-bound goals, and so I had them actually start every class period with looking at their, their class period in chunks of time. So they had to figure out what is my goal for this 15 minutes, what is my goal for the second 15 minutes until the end of class. And so I found that when we did this, I had to stop and tell them, okay, your 15 minutes are up, make any adjustments as you need, because some students realized they worked more slowly or more quickly than they anticipated. Uh, so this was a really interesting tool. And at first, I just had the paper like this, where they filled it out as a template. And then afterwards, they decided on their own template, their own format, where they had to track their goals for the day and review their, their procedures. One other thing that I really liked that I tried after we took the voice and choice class is I had students work towards a confidence level. We talked about quality, not quantity. So we talked in class about what it means to be confident and how you know you've learned something. So we had a one to five rating system where one is I have zero confidence, it's like it's in Chinese, and five is I could teach this to a neighbor. So we had students work until they were at a confidence level of a four. And we had 48 possible problems they could do or different things they could identify. Uh, we were working on phrases and subjects and predicates, and we said, hey, am I done now? And the kids said, well, I'm at a three, I should probably keep going. So we checked, and it was a very interesting shift because I said, am I done? No, if you're not at a confidence level of a four, you are not done. And so that really stuck, I loved that, and I've used that quite a few times since then. The other thing that I really like that we actually have on my wall we can look at in a moment is they needed a visual learning progress chart because the students don't often check their grades. They need to see, just besides a missing assignment, where they are. And eighth graders are not as apt to go and check their own grades. They kind of wait for us to kick them in the butt or their parents to do the same. So we want them to take ownership. So I just started making everything visual. Where are you? What are you missing? What needs to be redone? So I put that on the wall. And then we talked about planning and reflection time as one of the most important pieces and processing their learning because you can do your activities, but if you do not process, then you're not learning and you're not growing. So we would stop a little early, you know, what you consider completion, we would stop and say, how did it go? We really, I really try to protect that time, at least seven to 10 minutes at the end of a class period, which seems insane <laughs> because that's, you know, it's a good chunk of a, a class period, but that's where they learn. So just those four things are the ones that I'd like to point out that we found from the new, the new learning in the class. Right. Did you want to share the progress check? We can take a look if we want to. So I started this this quarter. They This is basically just a, a visual grade book for them. So they have their formatives and summatives, what they should be doing, and the numbers correspond. So it's just like a living grade book. And I have students that I say, okay, go check your stuff, and all the assignments are numbered so they can find them. And I'm not hunting them down. I just put it up here and they look at the numbers so the grades aren't posted, but it also focuses on not just what are your zeros, but what are you not proficient in yet and what do you need to fix. And I have quite a few students that love erasing and they love taking down those pieces. It's, it's their, their communication board. And I've had a lot of positive feedback from students about this because I've asked them, how do you like it? Is that working for you? And they say, please, please, please keep doing this because it's, it's helpful. 